Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Everything is okay? Yes, yes it is. Great, uh, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's one uh, uh, PM already. And dear participants, uh, welcome you on the 27th International Symposium on Morphological Sciences. Cells, tissue, organs, experience, innovation, and the progress. Let me introduce you today, uh, chairman of the poster section, Professor Sergei Lashenko. He represents Orenburg State Medical University, Russia, and uh, Professor uh, Gaziza Smagulova, West Kazakhstan, Maratastan of Medical University, Kazakhstan. Professors, please. Oh, sorry, I'm apologized. I can connect uh, my video, but uh, I think I'll try to do it more later. First of all, I um, very glad uh, to see all participants of our poster section. And um, I'm so glad and proud to be the part of the International Symposium of um, Morphological Science. Uh, today we have the fourth day, the last day, but not the least, but about its importance. And so, um, I think uh, our uh, today's uh, uh, poster section uh, have uh, would have a impact uh, for uh, our uh, international symposium, and uh, oh, I wish you all uh, participants uh, good luck. And uh, I think we have a lot of important information from your uh, presentations. Um, Maybe uh, uh, co-chairman uh, uh, Sergei Nikolaevich add some words. Thank you, Gaziza Azmagulovna. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleague and dear participant. Uh, I'm glad to see you. I wish you successful work. And, and please observe the 10 minutes uh, limit time. And you start, you begin our meeting. The first, the first report, Sabina Aliyeva, Baku, Azerbaijan, investigation of asymmetry in different uh, shaped face skill. Sabina, please. Thank you, Professor, uh, dear colleagues, and I am glad to be in here also. Hello from Azerbaijan. Uh, I, am, uh, uh, I am working in uh, human anatomy and medical terminology uh, department of uh, Azerbaijan Medical University. In my uh, today's speech, part of my scientific uh, research, the results of the asymmetry deformation of the lateral view in different form of the skull. For introduction, uh, in modern times, uh, the, activity, uh, the activities of plastic and maxillofacial surgeries are aimed uh, at early eradication of determination defects and disproportions. A successful diagnostic examination of uh, the maxillofacial region and the selection of ad uh, adequate treatment method depend on the accuracy of the, of the date of the regularity of the bone structure localization in this region. Changes in the soft tissues of the face as well as in the skull bones cases asymmetry. Um, for the material, uh, material and methods, the skulls from the chronological collection of the Museum of Human Anatomy and Medical Terminology of the Azerbaijan Medical University were used during the research. The skulls were deported, it means known by age and sex, 
with no deformation, no visible damage, and uh, different ages of uh, postnatal development. Asymmetry was researched. researched Asymmetry was researched in craniometric parameters of 120 human skull. Uh, the, research, uh, the research used the classical method of craniometry and the modern fun method. Uh, for the results, uh, the skull studies in the research were subdivided into the upper face index upper face in the, the skull studies in the research were subdivided into the upper face index. It was clarif cl clarified how many percentage of facial forms occur. Uh, they, uh, according to Mr. Martin's classification, there are three type of uh, skull on the upper face index. White face, Arion, uh, middle face, Mesen, and long face, Lepten. Um, uh, for um, the, in the distribution of the investigation materials show that the long face leptin, its upper face index more than 50, 55, had 44 skull. In this illustration, we are showing this. Uh, uh, in the middle face, uh, mezen upper face index between the 50 and 54.9, with the 85, uh, eight, uh, 58 skull, and the face, uh, uh, white face, uh, the Arion index lesser than 50 was observed in them 18 uh, uh, skulls and we will we are showing in here percentage of these uh, skulls for example Arion is 50 percent leptens it's the uh, 30 in, in, in 37 percent and mezen was found or was found it's the 48 percentage of uh, used skulls and the, the, all of the, the uh, all of the skulls was 120. The, 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 the to determine of the asymmetry in the different form of the uh, skull measurements were made on the lateral thumb in the in male and female skull. <clears throat> For the lateral thumb, uh, the zygium point one of the chronometric point, zygium point, zygium point, the forest point, a forest point of the zygomatic bone was taken. It's the main point. Also, starting from this point, shown in this illustration, figure number two, uh, starting this point uh, and uh, ending at the surrounding chronometric points was measured. Also, the figures of the research were statistically analyzed. And here, uh, the way we take the, uh, bet uh, to, um, we take the measurements between zygion and the infraorbital foramen, there is a slightly, slightly right side asymmetry uh, in the long face female skull, middle face skull right side asymmetry, and long face skull left side asymmetry were observed from the zygion point to uh, here is the lateral margin of the aperture piriformis. Uh, the aperture in the white face uh, female skull, there is a right side. In the middle face skull, left side, and the long face skull, there is a right side asymmetry were, were, were observed. From zygion point to ganion point, uh, in the uh, white face female skull, there is a right side, middle face skull, weakly left side, and long face skull, weakly uh, left side asymmetry were observed. From zygion point to ganion point, in the uh, white face female skull, there is a weakly left side, middle face skull, right side, and long face skull, weakly left side asymmetry were observed. 
Also, the, the, in the female, in the male skulls, this distance between zygion and infraorbital foramen in uh, the indicate by the left side asymmetry all forms of the male skull between zygion point and the lateral margin of aperture piriformis point. There is a right side asymmetry in the middle face male skull. All other forms of this uh, facial skull, there is a left side asymmetry where observed. Observed. From zygion point uh, to ganion point and from zygion point to gnation point, only left side asymmetry were observed in the male skulls. The study found that regardless of the shape, female skull had the most left side asymmetry at the side of the lateral fan, regardless of the shape of the male skull, except distance between zygion point and the lateral edge of the aperture piriformis, that is the only left side asymmetry is observed all other distance in the lateral fan. For the conclusion, uh, the, the left side asymmetry in the male, male and the female skulls of the different shape of studied was predominant. Thank you for your attention. Good luck for all of you. Thank you, Sabina. Very interesting report. Word question. Have colleague. Uh, may I ask uh, one question? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, 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 where you uh, take your scalps, the first yeah, and uh, the second questions, yeah. uh, uh, what is the novelty of your work? Okay, uh, we have the anatomy department, inside of the anatomy department, we have chronolog chronological collection. We have so many skulls, we have museum inside of our department, good museum, I think it's the most beautiful, most largest museum, um, okay, in the world, it's anatomy museum, and we have chronological collection. And we are using the, uh, for, uh, this uh, research materials from our museum, uh, and it's uh, pa they they all all skulls they have passports. Uh, what's the passport? We know sex and we know age of these uh, skulls. For the other question, I, can you please uh, one more time repeat your question? I forgot about the second question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the novelty uh, of your uh... novelty. It's the. Uh, can you please one more time uh, open for me? It's novelty. Uh, how we are using my uh, research materials or? Yes. How to, uh, you use your ah, yes. uh, practical practical reality? Yes. Yes. Say, in such have, yes. Thank you for your question. We have huge. Because we, the firstly, it's the uh, moder modern, we are using it in anatomy department. Uh, we are using it's topographic anatomy department, like it's the craniometry. It's like the using materials for anatomy department, for topographic anatomy department. Also, we are uh, also, it's uh, the research is very large. Also high definition, uh, it's the face, face controls. It's the more uh, practice, uh, more, more practical, it's the face controls uh, using, using these uh, numbers and the, uh, the, you can make or the, uh, uh, they can make the high face controls also. Thank you, Sabrina. You are welcome. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for your question. It was interesting. This, this information was very important for plastic surgery, stomatology, also, dental specialist. Yes, yes. Very, very good. Thank you. Uh, next question from uh, Baku, Azerbaijan, uh, to uh, colleague Yagubova Influence of my pituitary and adrenal glands of compensatory adaptive process occurring in the body in condition of 
Bara camera hypoxia. Hello. Hello. Yes, we are here. You please. <laughs> You're welcome. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Can I start? Okay. Uh, first, uh, first of all, I am greeting you from Azerbaijan uh, Medical University from Sane, Azerbaijan. The uh, topic of my presentation is uh, influence of uh, pituitary and adrenal glands on compensatory adaptive processes occurring in the body in condition of uh, barocamera hypoxia. This study of the characteristic features of uh, uh, physiological and uh, pathological processes occurring in the body um, under the influence of hypoxia and the application of compensatory adaptive machines for oxygen deficiency in clinical practice for treatment had always been in the attention of specialists. Uh, the objective of the study was to study the characteristic features of uh, morphofunctional changes in the tissue structures of pituitary and adrenal glands. Also, the object of the study, object of the study uh, was to study the characteristic, uh, was materials taken from the pituitary and adrenal glands of the male uh, white rats weighting from 180 to 200 uh, grams. The methods are used the following. The first of all, the anatomical, histological, electron, immunohistochemical, and um, um, morphometric methods were used. As a result of our investigation, uh, we have concluded um, that the adrenal glands adapts more quickly to uh, hypoxia than the uh, pituitary. Also, acute microfunctional changes occur in the tissues and cells of the glands as a result of the influence of uh, hypoxia. Also, at an early stage of the study, uh, the restoration of uh, adrenal gland tissues is observed uh, also, uh, on the 15th, uh, 15th day of the experiment and the structural uh, reconstruction of uh, pituitary gland is observed on the 13th day also. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your report. Uh, colleague, who won't ask the question? Okay. Very interesting report and very interesting moment because many students uh, study physiological clinical effect uh, of the uh, hypoxia and you study morphological aspect with uh, a very good result and very important information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Next report uh, from North Sultan, Kazakhstan, your leak uh, circuit craniometric parameter of uh, adolescents uh, of two ethnic group uh, uh, in Astana city. Mm -hmm. Colleague, please. So let me welcome the organizers and the participants. We are from the Medical University of the Astana in the North Sultan city and the Kazakhstan. And our topic begins like a craniometric parameters of the adolescents of two eating groups in the Astana city. As the background, we used that like, in the second half of the 19th century, when the anthropology became an independent branch in the system of biological sciences. In many countries, the studies of different peoples of the world on a set of the structural features, mainly of the head and the face, 
the characterizing their racial features, they was widely conducted. And it will be interesting to know the relative contribution of the European and the Mongoloid components to the formation of the calyx, and as well as whether their morphological features of the structure of the head and the face in children of various constitutional types. As the purpose of the study is to study the age dynamics of the main cranial metric and the racial diagnostic criteria for adolescents of Kazakhs and Russians. As the methods we used 1,981 adolescents were examined, they including 1,024 boys and the 957 girls of the secondary school in Astana city. For craniometric studies, we used thick and sliding dividers as well as the millimeter tape and the main parameter of the cerebral part of the skull are longitudinal and transverse dim dimensions. The first one is the longitudinal size of the skull was measured from glabella to the epistacranium. And the second one, the transverse size was determined between the most distant points of the parietal tubercles. The radius index was calculated by the transverse dimension divided on the longitudinal dimension. It's multiplied on 100. So as a research results, there was, according to our research, pronounced sexual dimorphism is observed in the total increase in the longitudinal size of the head in the Kazakhs. So the total increase in the voice of this ethnic group was 7.1 millimeters, and for the girls is a 4.5 millimeters. While in the Russian children, their increase is much lower, and the difference between boys and the girls is not so significant respectively three millimeters for the boys and the 2.3 millimeters for the girls. But apparently this is due to the fact that the maximum growth rates of the longitudinal diameter of the head in Russian children occur earlier and by the study period, Russians are already significantly ahead of the Kazakhs. And all the more it is known that the definitive values of the longitudinal diameter of the head in Russians are higher than in the Kazakhs. And the transverse diameter of the head in contrast, the contrast to the longitudinal one was greater among the calyx in all age groups. The greatest difference is observed at 13 years for the boys is 2.1 millimeters and for the girls 2.6 millimeters. Then the difference gradually decreases by the age of 16 years is 0 0.7 millimeters for the boys and 1.7 millimeter for the girls. The longitudinal diameter, which is a part of the main measurement of the cerebral part of the head in Russian children in all age group was greater than the Kazakhs and the difference decreased with the age, while the transverse diameter of the head in contrast to the longitudinal diameter in all age groups was greater than in the Kazakhs. The radius index in Russian for both boys and the girls corresponds to mesocephaly. For the Kazakh girls, it is brachycephaly. And for the boys, age differences have appeared from 13 to 14 years. Kazakhs are brachycephalic, and from 15 years old, they mesocephalic. So as a conclusion, we can say that a tendency towards the dolichocephalization of the Kazakhs was revealed as the evidence by an increase in the longitudinal diameter and then decrease in the transverse diameter of the head. This process is most pronounced in the boys and the head index of the radius at 13 and 14 years of age corresponds to the brachycephaly. It's 82.92 uh, and 81.98. Uh, and at the 15 and 16 years of age to mesocephaly. It's 80.84 and 80.82. The growth rate of the craniometric parameters is greater in the Kazakh ethnic groups, both in the boys and the girls. So thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you, Erlik. Uh, colleague, no oh, one yes. ask the question. Thank you, Yerlik. I have uh, the same question as uh, the question for the first presenter from Baku. Uh, what is the practical actuality of your uh, research? And I want to mention the notice that uh, these two works uh, are closer each to other, and maybe. Uh, 
uh, Azerbaijan uh, scientists uh, uh, know about the national uh, specificity or they don't take uh, it in care. But uh, Irlik, please answer, what is the practical novelty or actuality of your project? Public answer the questions. Okay. Oops. So as a practical measures, we can say that there was, uh, we conducted the, of the European and the Mongolian components in the formation of the Kazakhs. It was a specific uh, research for the morphological, to know the morphological features of the structure of the head and the face of the children of the various constitutional types. And uh, in the future, they, it could be used in the, as you say, in the surgery, in the facial surgery, just as uh, to increase the knowledge in that field. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Are yes, you hear me? You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I want to ask about uh, uh, what's it, have you uh, data on significance in in statistically? You show uh, us to result in 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 this date, but I, I couldn't see any statistical uh, differences. And uh, how many um, schoolboy and schoolgirls you have? You should to have for this part of investigation and uh, could be a uh, powerful of investigation. Thank you. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Like this, this. Have you any statistically differences in between this group? You, you showed the uh, the data and uh, how about uh, powerful of investigation? Yeah. I mean, what uh, statistic uh, method you use? Parametric, yeah, yeah. What, what kind of no method? parametric and, uh, methods. Uh, how many uh, boys and girls you needed for 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 for, for this investigation, and uh, it could be enough for, for for this result. So, as I said, as the materials in the in the research methods we used, like one thousand nine hundred eighty one adolescents. There was like one thousand twenty four boys in which the four hundred seventy five Kazakhs and the 449 Russians and uh, 957 girls. There was four, 527 Kazakhs and 430 Russians. They are all of the secondary schools in the Assam city. And we use the sli sliding div uh, dividers as the millimeter tape also. And we use the red seals index to calculate or Dorifocephals is respectively like calculated. We okay, use the same dimension like longitudinal and the transverse. Okay. Any other questions, colleague? Please. I uh, thank you, Erlik, and next report. Uh, Omsk from Russia, Irina Nikolaevna Putalova. The rule of amino acid involved in glutathion biosynthetic of correct change kills by high dose uh, of sodium selenite. Irina Nikolaevna, please. Sorry. Uh, dear Sergey Nikolaevich, dear colleagues, friends, and symposium participants, dear Gunnar, 
I am Irina Putalova. I uh, am from Omsk State Medical uh, University. Uh, this, this article uh, is uh, one part of uh, our collective investigation about influence selenium on organism. Selenium is a vital, vital trace element for a human organism. It is a part of more than 30 proteins. A decrease in the content of this trace element in tissues can provoke a reaction of formation of toxic oxygen metabolites uh, that damage cell membranes, which is the basis of morphofunctional changes in internal gomonos. Uh, therefore, the leading mechanism of its biological act action is antioxidant. The soils of Omsk region is classified as selenium deficient. This implies the lack of selenium in organism of people living in these areas. At the same time, the selenium compounds have a lower therapeutic threshold. So a relatively small excess of the intake can cause poisoning. In these conditions, a significant load, for example, with uncontrolled use of selenium containing drugs falls on the lymphatic system, lymphoid organs, which are responsible for detoxification and uh, homeostasis of the internal environment in the organism. The administration of higher doses of sodium selenide causes a decrease in the amount of glutathan that uh, protects of, uh, the membrane structures of cells from oxidative stress. Our purpose was to evaluate the effectiveness of the administration of amino acids involved in the biosynthesis of glutathione for correction of structural and uh, metabolic disorders in mesenteric lymph nodes, liver, and blood. There are three amino acids, sodium glutamate, acetylcysteine, and uh, glycine. Picture one. Uh, according uh, to our data, the structure of the mesenteric lymph nodes of red control group is dominated by the area of medulla, which allows it to be classified as a fragmented type. For nodes of this morphotype, the found lymph transport is more characteristic. Six days after five times of administration of higher dose of selenide in animals' blood, a decrease in the number of red blood cells and the concentration on hemoglobin was determined, which leads to hypoxia. The consequence of this is an increase in the incidence intensity of an aerobic glycolysis, which is expressed uh, an increase in the concentration of lactic uh, acid in red blood. Picture seven. These processes are associated with increased production of active oxygen metabolites. The total area of uh, the mesenteric lymph node are reduced by 17%. The morphotype of uh, the node changes the compact. However, it doesn't respond to the organism needs. In blood, the content of substance of catabolic original oxides, uh, the control values by two times, and the values of uh, the leukocyte index of intoxication and the number of neuro, neurotrophic uh, granulocytes maximally reduced. Administration of amino acid involved uh, in biosynthesis of uh, glutathione following higher dose of sodium selenide leads to uh, replenishment to glutathione in mesenteric lymph node, liver, and red blood cells, which 
uh, increases the number of erythrocytes and uh, hemoglobin and does not differ from that of uh, control. The decrease in lactic acid in blood indicated a higher level of oxygen in tissues and reducing the degree of hypoxia. It is confirmed by uh, sufficient uh, glucose concentration and a decrease in uric acid content. In the uh, mesenteric lymph nodes and the liver, the administration of acid leads to better preservation of the lipid antioxidants. Their activity increases, prevents uh, inhibition of anti-radical protection. It is indicated by increased activity of superoxide dismutase, and the activity of catalase reaches uh, control values. Reducing the degree of lipoprescription in the mesenteric lymph nodes contributes to the degree uh, preservation of the functions of uh, anti-peroxide protection enzymes. A lower degree of damage to hepatocytes, uh, page, uh, picture uh, eight and uh, nine, is indicated by a decrease in activity of a lead intercept. The revealed transformation of uh, mesenteric lymph node indirectly indicated an increase in its renewed function and uh, active detoxication function. In liver, dystrophic changes are local in nature, detected in periportal and pericentral zones. The number of uh, binuclear hepatocytes increases. P uh, picture six. Feeling of uh, glutathione deficiency helps restore effective energy supply in the cells of the studied organs and uh, lessens uh, their risk the, via structural and functional disease. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Elena Nikolaevna. Colleague who won't ask the question. No, the question, but uh, it's uh, very interesting and very, how to say it, uh, amazing work in methodological uh, way, because in didactically, in histologically, uh, it's very uh, correct done work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, colleague. Next question from Aktobe, Kazakhstan. Anar Tuli, Tuli Tulaeva. 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 And diffuse type gastric cancer in young woman, a case report. Good afternoon, dear Anar, please. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I am very glad to take part in this 17 inter. International Symposium of Morphological Scientists. Let me introduce myself. I am doctorant, PhD doctorant, West Kazakhstan, Marat Panth Medical University. <clears throat> My report's topic is diffuse type of gastric cancer in young women, case report. At the beginning of my speech, I would like to share information about gastric cancer. Gastric cancer takes third place among oncological disease around the world. The second place is in mortality rate. Gastric cancer incidence and mortality are highly variable in by region and highly dependent on diet and helicobacter pillar infection, also genetic predisposition. Each year, over a million new cases of gastric cancer are diagnosed worldwide. Gastric cancer is often diagnosed at an advanced stage and prognosis is still unsatisfactory due to the high incidence of recurrence. Numerous pathological classification were proposed for evolution of the tumor behavior in gastric cancer. Lowering classification is the most useful and widely applicable classification system in gastric cancer. Generally, lowering classification is classified into intestinal type and diffuse type. The histology of the two types of gastric cancer used to have distinct epidemiology and prognosis. <coughs> 
the two subtypes share common data or environmental risk factors. However, intestinal types are more associated with environmental factors, whereas the diffuse type usually present genetic etiology. Diffuse type consists of single ring cell carcinoma and poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. Intestinal type includes highly and moderately differentiated adenocarcinomas. Case report. Patient with uh, 30 years old was admitted with clinic of decompensated stenosis of stomach in serious condition. After a complete examination, we diagnosed gastric cancer. The process was confirmed by histological verification. Histology study revealed a low-grade adenocarcinoma. After preoperative preparation and total, we did total gastrectomy with lymphadenectomy in D2 volume. After the operation period passed without complication, post-operative histology confirmed the poorly different adenocarcinoma with single brain cell differentiation, which invasion of all layers of stomach wall and surrounded tissue, tumor embolism in vessels, metastasis in tissue of the large amentum in the age of resection of the upper and lower part of stomach. Post-operative diagnosis, diffuse type of gastric cancer in advanced stage. According to the treatment guidelines, she received five course of the first line of multi chemotherapy. After five more operation on computer tomography, we detected hepatomegaly and acids were found. Hemotherapy is missed in second lines. And after eight months, after operation, positional emission tomography revealed metabolic active changes in this mesenter of the small intestine, diffuse fixation of radionuclide fluorodoxyglucose in the esophageal wall, an array of anastomosis, metastasis in both lungs and pellet effusion. According to the recommendation of, of the multidisciplinary group, the patient received also four courses of palliative chemotherapy and symptomatic therapy. In this uh, poster, you will see immunohistology, which we did using of two biomarkers. One of markers is um, TI67, which show proliferation cancer cells. And second, it's BCL pro-apoptotic pro proteins, uh, which show apoptosis. And in this additional, uh, in this process, in case, we identified that uh, staining score, key I-67, uh, shows about 90% uh, and BCL staining was negative. This additional confirmation of the assessment of progressive gastric cancer in our patient. Primary single ring cell carcinoma present in young ages than non single ring cell cancer, especially in young women, and often late the disease course and pretends poor prognosis. In conclusion, we would like to say that young generation gastric cancer is very aggressive with frequent rapid development of replacement progression. We must use immunochemistry in a case by case basis to tailor the treatment. With a recommendation identified the gain of hereditary predisposition. Science in young generation diagnosed gastric cancer, it may be evidence of the first deposit manifestation of hereditary cancer of the family in this patient. Thank you for your attention. I'm done. Thank you, Anar. Very seriously, case. Colleague, have you a question? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm from Kazakhstan, October. As histologist, uh, I have one question. Um, did you calculate uh, proliferative and the mitotical index? Yes, we calculated mitotical index by K67 uh, labeling index. Thank you. Have your question, colleague. Anna, no, thank I, you. 
I only yeah. noticed that Anara uh, is no uh, morphologist. She is clinician, she is oncologist. And so uh, it's very interesting where we have a um, uh, connection of two specialities, histological, histomorphological study and uh, clinical study. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anat, uh, for interesting report. And next, next report, next colleague, Ramid Minigazimov uh, Mini uh, from Russia, Ufa, Bashkir Medical University, or not? Uh, adaptive reconstruction of serious membranes and stereomorphology of the collagen fibers. Ramil, please. Re respected, uh, respected chairmen, Professor Lashenko, Professor Smagulova, uh, I, I, I represented uh, the anatomy department of Bashkir Medical University. And uh, last year, we has been conducted very interesting branch of modern morphology. It's stereomorphology of cirrhosis membrane, cirrhosa membranes. And the, uh, in basis of our investigation, it's a new method. New method has been el elaborated uh, our associated professor, professor of our department, Mini Gazimov, and uh, he patented this technology, and we presented the results of our investigation. Uh, this methods, including the uh, using the uh, silver nitrate, silver nitrate solution to absorb from the surface. Uh, and uh, indicated the collagen fibers. The subject of our investigation, it's different type of cirrhosis membrane, pericardium, pleura, uh, parietal and visceral pleura, peritoneum also has been used, different type. And... Uh, uh, According to this method, it's possible to, to select it, to show the surface of collagen membranes. It's well known that outside layer of cirrhosis membrane, it's so-called uh, so uh, uh, collagen, uh, uh, <coughs> connective tissue, collagen, uh, wave, wavely, uh, fibrous, uh, fibrous, fibrous membrane. This membrane has been studied by using this method. On the first picture, on the first picture, you can see the membrane surface, the rose membrane surface, but here epithelium presented. On the next picture, epithelium is removed, and you can see the fibrous the collagen yes. fibers here and you know to describe so this for this service we use the, we couldn't to found them morphology terms and we use the terminology from from geology and cartography have a look here in general in general, this picture looks looks uh, looks the same in different parts, but really, after the morphological study, we have found the different places. For example, uh, first feature of the surface collagen fibers is diversional uh, diversions and conversions of uh, of spiral structure. Have a look here. Here you can see uh, schemes of the diversion, and here 
conversion structure. Uh, this, this structure, uh, it's uh, presented in different part of uh, peritoneal membrane, uh, usually in places where changing the area, changing the square, surface square in the peritoneum. And have a look here, also presented the surface of uh, collagen membrane and the reconstructive scheme here also. Uh, you know, the conversion and uh, diversions uh, feature relation to the type of uh, spirals structure, the collagen fibers. Have a look here. Here you can see the re reconstruction. Unfortunately, closed on my picture, but here E3, picture number E4 and E5 presented different type of spirals structure, the collagen fibers. We have found uh, two basis part of Stereomorpho collagen stereomorphology. It's uh, uh, so called biggest spirals, spirals, and small spirals. Biggest spirals more common in our body, in different serosis membrane presented, and uh, have a long, long step of the spiral, and uh, usually about 14 micrometer and diameter of this spiral according the according the 13 micrometer and but this type is uh, spiral uh, collagen fibers uh, you know can be right rotation and left rotation and and we have found the places where right rotation changing to the left rotation. Between the, this changing, located small type of spirals. It's, uh, it's uh, have another sides. The step of small sides, it's uh, sm small, uh, small spirals. It's about the 25 micrometer and diameter about the uh, 6.5 micrometer. You know, uh, the it's our our study is continuous now, and really we introduce our results in different branch of uh, practical medicine. For example, uh, we can use our results in tissue transplantation to prepare the membranes type of. Uh, biomaterial and using the regen regeneration, replacement, the new growing tissue in place of membrane tissue transplantation also. But uh, according to our opinion, this technology can be using in different branch of morphology, in stereomorphology. And uh, the method is, is not so difficult uh, and presented on this the patent presented on this presentation, have a look here, and in our publication also. I would like to say many thanks for, uh, for our organization committee of this high scientific meeting and, uh, excel and for excellent organization of our scientific meeting. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your work, for your invitation. And I hope our cooperation will be continue in future. Uh, 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 our first speaker also joined to our group, and we are ready to, to continue our discussion about this method of investigation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Radek Thank you. Thank you, Professor, Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Nigmatulin. And uh, I have uh, some suggestions, maybe, because I'm a clinician. Uh, it is very interesting to me know how to implement 
such uh, stereomorphological methods in diagnosing the um, diseases where we meet with the uh, um, how yes, to say? Yes. Uh, I, the, I understand the, your the, question. The thank you. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. You know, now we use our our method only in experimental research to mm -hmm. to elaborate mm -hmm. a, a new technology. For example, tissue transplantation technology. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but in uh, in uh, clinical practice for diagnostics. Today, I'm not ready to answer because it's mm -hmm. difficult to say what approach mm -hmm. of, uh, will be useful. But mm -hmm. maybe in future, we have found mm -hmm. this, this, this uh, we introduce your recommendation in our, in our <laughs> working also. Mm -hmm. also. Uh, maybe because uh, the um, rate of healing on in, in, in myocardial infarction maybe the yes. diagnostics of the uh, bioptats of uh, uh, renal or hyper bioptats it maybe will be useful but yes. it's only my suggestion yes thank yes you. yes 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 thank you for your comment uh, and uh, i hope it's uh, it's uh, it's will be possible in future i think Dear Professor Lashenko, Some, con some connected oh, so, sorry, problem. sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm you, uh, not uh, switch on my uh, mic. Uh, right. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, sound. Uh, please, Professor Nigmatulin, uh, switch off your presentation and uh, give the opportunity to other. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, the next uh, uh, presenter is from uh, Baku. Uh, Gulnara Kirim Zade uh, with the pastor uh, anatomical substantiation of the disease of the facial nerve. Please, you're welcome. Good afternoon, my dear colleagues. I greet you from Azerbaijan. My presentation is about anatomical substantiation of disease of the facial nerve. Among the lesions of the cranial nerves, Facial neuritis takes the second place after the trigeminal nerve. The clinical manifestation and occurrences of diagnosis of lesions of the facial nerve are largely associated with the features of its anatomical structure, and the frequency of damage of the facial nerve is largely due to slight vulnerability due to its adverse condition of the anatomical position. From its beginning of the innervated muscles, the facial nerve goes through a very complex winding pose with most of the close contact with various anatomical structure. The aim of the study was to study the external structure of the facial nerve and its branches, taking into account the topographic anatomy in different age groups. The facial nerves were studied in the courses of health people. After preparation of the scan and superficial fascia, parotid masseter fascia was isolated until it became well visible, visible through the underlying fascia, parotid gland segments and masseter muscle fibers. Five the preparation was made of the branches of the facial nerve located in the gland tusium. When isolating, the branches of the facial nerve, attention was paid to the presence of connection between the branches of the facial nerve. If the connection between the branches of the nerves were located outside the tusa of the parotid gland, when they were associated as peripheral, if the gland tusa were, were called central. We isolated the methods of detained myelin fibers by Wegert, Paul, and Krutzai. 
Navy branches to massive infolds and the new bounds usually you in a horizontal plane. Then the level of the beginning of the nerves in shaft so made and the branches of the facial nerve occur in oblique direction. The skeletal asymptotic position of the facial nerve is correlated with the shape of the head as well as with the anatomical features of the face. Studies of the structural features of the facial nerve, it is branches in humans have shown pronounced variability and varying degrees of asymmetry in relation to the tissues of the nerve and its branches. The formation of the external structure of the facial nerve basically ends by the end of the first half of intrauterine development when the main branch, the connection and distribution areas of, uh, are formed. Thank you for attention. Uh, thank you, uh, Gulnara, for your presentation. And uh, please ask the questions. If no, I have uh, some uh, additional uh, questions. Uh, first of all, I uh, very uh, glad that you in uh, Baku, in Azerbaijan, have a cadaver uh, section. Uh, and uh, the question is, how many corpses uh, do you uh, um, uh, were involved in your study? How many sections you do? And uh, were, uh, the uh, students of your university take part in these sections? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we uh, studies uh, the facial nerve in uh, uh, 111 microscopic studies and uh, 56 of external, we study ex external stru structure of facial nerve at its branch. Thank you. Thank you. Please, questions? And if you have no questions, uh, the next uh, presenter is uh, Dalia Rensivieni from uh, Kaunas, Lithuania, with a uh, poster, Hypertension Rearrange Neuroanatomy of the Heart. Please, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, good day, dear colleagues. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear and see your uh, poster, please. Um, very well. Um, um, I am, as you said, Delara and Seviene. I am PhD student from uh, Kaunas, Lithuania. Also, I am medical doctor in anesthesiology and intensive care. I would like to present our study about the rearrangement of the neuroanatomy of the heart in the presence of hypertension. As you may know very well, um, uh, cardiac uh, nervous system is uh, regulated autonomically and it is very sophisticated one and complex system. Uh, so we thought that it is very important to study a morphological background of this system uh, in the presence of cardiac diseases. Uh, in our case, uh, arterial hypertension. Uh, to do that, we conducted the uh, animal hypertension model with the rats. Uh, we used eight uh, adult um, male um, Vistarchioto rats for control group and eight uh, spontaneously hypertensive adult uh, male uh, rats for the hypertension group. Um, after euthanasia, uh, thoracotomy, removal of the heart, preservation of the heart was uh, dissected into two pieces, atrium and ventricles. Um, wall mount preparation was 
uh, meat from the atrium and uh, as well as from the ventricular uh, basal part. The rest of ventricle was used for the cryo sectioning uh, and uh, we did some uh, sections of it. Um, so uh, these specimens preparations were immunolabeled. We used uh, free antibodies. That would be uh, PGP 9.5 as a global neuronal marker, uh, choline acetyl uh, transferase uh, as parasympathetic, and tyrosine hydroxylase as adrenergic uh, innervation marker. Um, after immunolabeling, uh, we did the uh, microscoping with the confocal microscope and did some photos. Uh, we measured and counted the number, uh, the size of neurons, ganglia, and uh, nerves in the epicardium. Um, then uh, the results. Uh, uh, I will start with the atrium. Uh, so in the atrium, CHAT immunoresponsive neurons dominated in both groups. Um, TH positive neurons were scarcely found, uh, although TH positive uh, uh, nerve fibers uh, were found in all the uh, epicardiac ganglia in atrium. And uh, they were uh, similar in both groups. Um, in hypertension group, the number of the neurons uh, in ganglia and the size of ganglia was higher. Although the size of neuron itself was smaller. I would like to remind you that these neurons were basically parasympathetic ones. Mm. Then I will talk about ventricles. Uh, the thickness of the epicardiac nerves in the whole mount preparations were bigger in hypertension group, as well as the area of cross sections uh, in the uh, transverse uh, sections was also bigger in hypertension group. But interestingly, the um, percentage part of the PGP 9.5 material, which is marking neuronal material, was smaller in the SHR group, meaning that the increase of the epicardiac nerves in hypertension group happened not because of increase of neuronal material. Uh, so, um, I would like to conclude that there were uh, some changes found in uh, our specimens, and we think that they happened because of the hypertension. And the interesting thing is that these rats were not old, they were adult, only um, 12 weeks, that would be three months old. So I would like to say that. Uh, changes in intracardiac system happens quite early in the presence of hypertension. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Dr. Dalia. You did a very interesting presentation of your poster because all we know that one of the biggest problem in modern medicine is hypertension. It is the number one in uh, uh, mortality. And uh, so uh, all works which helps us to understand the mechanize, mechanisms and pathogenesis of this uh, disease is very important. Thank you. Please, uh, questions. If we know any questions, the second presenter is also from Kaunas, Lithuania, Almas uh, Tolidianula, uh, with a uh, presentation 
angiography during coronary artery bypass grafting. Please, uh, you're welcome. Hello, everyone. Are you hear me? Yes, we hear and uh, see your good morning, presentation. Dear colleagues. Uh, good morning, Professor. Uh, my name is Almas Taligenova. I'm also a PhD researcher in, from Kaunas, Lithuanian uh, University, Health and Science. And uh, today I'm going to present our study and uh, I hope you all fully mm, will involved. Uh, Intragrative angiography during coronary artery, uh, artery bypass grafting. If you talk about relevance of the research, the global coronary artery disease has become is the most common uh, cause of death in all income groups. Uh, it, and it was about 9 million uh, people in 2019. And this disease, disease remains um, the leading cause uh, of the death in all, over, over the past 20 years. And uh, precutaneous coronary intervention and the coronary artery bypass grafting is a guideline based um, treatment of uh, this disease. And uh, previous studies compared outcomes of these two methods, however, did not come to consensus in long term outcomes. And uh, early graft failure after cabbage remains a determining factor for the morbidity and mortality and technical errors rates up to 30%. Uh, but we have, there is not same result in PCI, which may be related to the final angiography after the treatment. In every major cardiovascular intervention, including cabbage should behave imaging data to lead acceptable result. And uh, uh, modern hybrid operating room enables the surgeon to perform two procedures in one without causing significant additional harm and, uh, to the patient. And it is important to, uh, for use these advantages that we have. And the aim of our study to, uh, uh, to assess advantages of using interpretive angiography in daily practice after cabbage to assess the defects and to confirm this effectiveness in follow up. Uh, if you talk about methods, this is prospective pilot study of 50 patients with multivisual uh, coronary disease who underwent cabbage and the interpretive graph assessment. All patients um, underwent cabbage in hybrid room in Department of Cardiac Thoracic and Vascular Surgery in Pound Clinics with permission uh, by our Medical Research Ethical Committee. And uh, overall, we have uh, 144 grafts and uh, 160 distal anastomosis. Uh, cabbage surgery was performed in standard technique with general anesthesia and with endotracheal intubation. Revascularization was from via median sternotomy with uh, its standard coronary uh, pulmonary bypassing and the cardiology was Thomas solution st standard technique. And the, uh, as you see a result, we have um, 50 patient uh, with 65 aged uh, participate in our study. Regarding uh, the left coronary artery was used with left mammary artery and the vein graft used for mainly in right coronary artery or the circumflex artery. All in all, we have 23 angiographic defects detected in 22 patients and three graft defects was detected, uh, 17 anastomotic defects and three target artery errors was detected. Uh, 10 interventions needed uh, detect, uh, needed for uh, required train interventions. Uh, if you can see in figure one, uh, we can uh, see vein graft defects was uh, corrected by removing the thrombus. This is pre-operative, this is post-pre-intervention, uh, uh, this is pro pre intervention post-train intervention. And the uh, second part of this uh, lima graft, uh, left internal mammary artery defect was corrected by removing clip and suture. Uh, seven, seven anastomosis required corrections that uh, we required uh, repeated cross clamping and cardioplegia. Four vein grafts were mismatched. Uh, in this study, we, um, two patients was died during surgery. Uh, Post-operative complications were with cardiogenic shock, respiratory failure, 
uh, ventricle fibrillation, bleeding required transternotomy. One patient uh, required uh, and uh, had renal failure uh, with two days uh, hemodialysis, hemodialysis after the uh, operation. In CTA, uh, computer tomography and geography um, was prolonged during the pandemic time. Anyway, uh, it was 224 days uh, and all grafted uh, required uh, intervention and uh, uh, re-intervention were patent. And if you talk about uh, limitations, this is also uh, a relatively sm a small number of the uh, participants and single st uh, center study. Um, this study combined the cardiologists and the surgeon efforts, uh, recurring large simple of patient with certain period of time was limitation for our study. This is approximately 10% of our early activities no long-term outcomes and uh, also cost effectiveness because intraoperative angiography is not so uh, not cheap procedure. If you talk about conclusion, uh, the um, intraoperative angiography in hybrid operating room is a powerful tool uh, which allows to detect technical errors and uh, all uh, defects what were required uh, reintervention uh, and their revision uh, were patent it's most important thing i think uh, thank you so attention if you have any question please thank you very much it uh, it was also very interesting uh presentation because we know that in uh, all uh, big uh, Kazakhstan cities, we have cardiosurgery centers. And also I know in Russia, uh, there are many uh, cardio uh, uh, surgery centers. And it's uh, a big uh, amount of patients who pass through the uh, such uh, revascularization procedure as uh, uh, cabbage and uh, Improving such technology is very important in modern uh, world. Uh, please, uh, questions. If we have no questions, we finish our poster uh, section, but we have no, uh, we have uh, one additional report of Dmitry Sherbakov from Ufa, Russia, and he welcome to present his report. Dmitry. Uh, yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for you giving me work today because I uh, can't do my presentation yesterday. Uh, uh, today we will talk about uh, maxillary sin uh, sinus uh, hypoplasia and si silent uh, sinus syndrome. I am a uh, doctor of medicine and uh, professor assistant uh, in the State Medical University and uh, I'm a head of uh, department of uh, uh, head and neck surgery in Russian eye and plastic surgery center. Uh, so uh, what we know about uh, uh, silent uh, sinus syndrome. The main complaints is hypophthalmos. Uh, this illness uh, was uh, first uh, described uh, by Montgomery in 1964, and he described this condition like a quiet disease uh, of an adult patient. Uh, and in nowadays, uh, so the common treatment is surgery of the maxillary sinus. But uh, the main question is, uh, what is appropriate age for the surgery? Uh, and contemporary methods uh, is endoscopic maxillary uh, sinus surgery uh, with enlarging of the natural ostium and uh, the orbital floor raising. But uh, what is the uh, main method and what is appropriate age? Uh, it, it is uh, main questions. Uh, so, how, uh, how we can uh, uh, know the uh, appropriate age for the surgery? Uh, 
uh, it is about skull growth or maxillary sinus growth. Uh, uh, we think that the second type of the maxillary sinus hypoplasia uh, in classification by Bolger is a silent uh, sinus syndrome. And uh, it is not uh, required, uh, required uh, illness, but uh, uh, it's uh, from development. Uh, the aim was to identify the stage of embryogenesis of the maxillary sinus in the uh, period from uh, 7 to 20 weeks of the development. Uh, mm, embryological uh, studies, uh, uh, we used embryos uh, with gestation age 7 to uh, uh, 11 weeks uh, and <coughs> embryos of uh, 12 to weeks. Exclusion criteria was embryos uh, with birth uh, defects of development of the musculoskeletal system, gastrointestinal tract, kidney, urinary system. Uh, radiological studies uh, uh, was in two places. Uh, it's a uh, regional clinical hospital in Tumen and our uh, clinical center in Ufa. Uh, exclusion criteria was a history of chronic disease of uh, nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses, such as uh, nasal septum deviation, uh, chronic rhinus sinusitis, hypertrophic rhinitis, uh, as uh, episodes of acute rhinus, uh, rhinus sinusitis in the last three months. Uh, here you can see uh, the morphological study results. Uh, it is a coronal section of the embryo in 11 weeks. Here we can see um, maxillary sinus. Uh, in uh, 16 weeks, we can see uh, near the maxillary sinus the uh, unsinate process or the ethmoid bone. And uh, uh, we can say that uh, the development of the maxillary sinus is uh, closely connected with uh, the development of the onset process of the ethmoid bone, uh, as, as we can see. Uh, uh, here it is, radiological study results. Uh, uh, it is a female, uh, 71 years old. And here it is the second uh, type of, of uh, hypoplasy of the maxillary sinus. It is uh, silent sinus syndrome. And uh, here it is on the male, uh, uh, 26 years old. Uh, this is not uh, uh, silent sinus syndrome. It is uh, hypoplasy of the maxillary sinus, the first type. Uh, so uh, there is a uh, uh, coronal city of the male uh, uh, the 13 years old. And here they can see uh, the uh, first type of, of hypoplasy of the maxillary sinus too. Uh, because so uh, here uh, there is no uh, shading of the maxillary sinus. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is the CT scan of the of child, female, uh, seven years old. And here we can see silent sinus syndrome. Uh, and uh, it is a second type of uh, hypoplasy of the maxillary sinus. The clinical case of male. Uh, uh, 12 years old, uh, we can see uh, the uh, results of the surgery uh, of the enlargement of uh, the uh, natural ostium of maxillary sinus, uh, the second day of the uh, <coughs> surgery, uh, endoscopic view. So uh, our summary is that the silent, uh, silent sinus syndrome should be considered as acquired disease uh, uh, 
sorry, uh, should uh, should be considered not as a um, acquired disease, but as a worry of uh, the maxillary sinus hypoplasia. And the uh, second one that the surgical treatment of the silent sinus syndrome should be carried out only in children under uh, 12 years old uh, before uh, uh, before formation of a permanent bite. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Shcherbakov. And have you any questions? Please ask. Oh, dear participants, dear colleagues, I uh, must notice that we finished our work in time, in spite of we have uh, more or less uh, presenter. But uh, nevertheless, I want to say that um, we have uh, today 10 uh, presentations and these 10 presentations cover a wide uh, questions of uh, modern uh, morphological science. Uh, three presentations was the, um, about the uh, uh, new knowledge about our scalp and uh, they have a very... Uh, useful clinical uh, application. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, two works about the influence of in environmental uh, uh, in the work of Irina Putalova uh, of Omsk and also uh, Mm, the influence uh, or, or to, of, of, of uh, pituitary glands uh, uh, and uh, compensatory adaptive processes of uh, Dr. Yagubova are also very interesting. But I want to say about uh, ever some work of uh, doctors from uh, Ufa, Minigazimov and Nigmatulin about new stere uh, stereomorphological uh, methods uh, used in anatomy, and also very interesting work of Dr. Dalia Rensevigene uh, from uh, Kaunas, uh, Lithuania, uh, about new knowledge of the structure uh, of um, heart, uh, its uh, morph uh, neural. Uh, system uh, of uh, heart and how it's uh, changed during uh, hypertension. And also I want to say about two uh, works of uh, PhD students, Anartulaeva and uh, Arman Tuligenov, uh, because they make closer morphological science to the clinic, to the clinician. And uh, so I want to say that it was a great proud for me and a great privilege uh, to be the moderator of such interesting poster sessions and be the part of the International Symposium of uh, Morphological Science. And now we finished our uh, poster sessions. I wish you all of us uh, good luck uh, and uh, new um, achievements and investigations uh, in your uh, scientific uh, life. And also I wish you all uh, health and be safe in our pandemic world. Uh, I think we, uh, it is not our uh, last uh, meeting, uh, and uh, I hope we uh, and uh, uh, go, uh, see forward for our uh, future meetings. Good luck for all. Thank you for, for participating.